around this area. And, and this is kind of the culture of the area. What are you excited for this area to learn about us in this play? Mm. I mean, I don't even think it's necessarily like learn. It's like, you know how you have to like, they're gonna learn without knowing it. It's like, what's the, what's the old like cliche, like fun and educating, like, you know, when you're in school? Cause it's like, the stories are like hyper specific. So it's very easy for like it to be like, oh, this is, this doesn't relate to me. Um, but I think what, it's beautiful about it is the collection of stories back to back to back where it's like I don't really get this first one but after seeing the fourth and the fifth and the sixth like oh that's what she was talking about before because I see it embodied in this and then because it's so funny along the way um, it's enjoyable and you know when you laugh you lean in a little bit more so um, and and too just being out here like, this is my first time really in Florida like people want to be around other people like this city really is alive in a way that I didn't expect. And so they're gonna wanna be a part of it. These, I really feel like this audience is gonna wanna take ownership of these characters that we're creating. And that's why I'm excited for the audience to come because they're the last part of the equation. When you say alive, what does that feel, what does that feel like? When you say it's alive. I have never had so many random strangers just come up and talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> you look like somebody. Okay. No, in my life, where it was just like, it's like on some real, like, I'm just walking down the street, and it's the friendliest people, it's just like, hey, like, and there, it's a lot of artists, like, there's a lot of, I, I remember now that, like, a lot of people, like, for whatever reason, gave up on art during their life to pursue a different career because of their family, because of whatever, and art still excites them. Like, whether it's a street performer, whether it's just a random person talking to me, like, they're excited to see it, and we're gonna, we can give them, like, good, they're excited to be around good art. And I think that the show, in a lot of ways, the conversations that it opens up and can inspire, I mean, inspire, um, grants people the permission to have very difficult, sometimes, conversations, and talk about things that that are still very much a part of our world or we're at least dealing with the ramifications of and we need to be able to to have a conversation about that and then with you in the room and giving us permission to like hey y'all we're doing this but we got permission to just have some black joy yeah, yeah, yeah. and that was like really liberating as an artist to not always have to color into the lines in that way like we're on a black production we can kind of let it hang you know a little bit and so that's what it's been for me in the last you know, couple of weeks, just the permission as an artist to go there and not to hold myself into a box and to redefine to myself what art means. And that's why you can walk around the city and somebody who, you know, I used to be in a play in high school. I used yeah. to be, like, yeah. everyone is an artist. We're just, you know, on a scale of it at a different point, you know? And it's so it, they can look at you and recognize the artist within themselves. And it's a little inspiring to give somebody else that permission. Like, you, you said can, that everyone's an artist, is that what you said? Yeah, we all have a look. We all have that. I, I go back to Ratatouille. But but I also want to I mean we have a conversation that this should be reverence and honor paid to people who committed to a life in it. A lot That's of good, life, yeah. Who 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 bring another depth of a level of craft, level of craft mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. understanding to to that work. But I think also what you people are seeing it as work walking around here is our humanity and we're seeing mm -hmm. it and so I keep, keep going back to this humanity thing. Mm -hmm. What else? Anybody else? Can I just yeah. also something she said, and I and I'd love for you to speak to it and, and and talk about it a bit more. Is is she talked about Black Joy? Mm -hmm. um, and and this is something that I think that especially you know a lot of times my job is simply to make space for the art, which is a good you know a, a good thing to do. And so this and is a bad thing to do. And a bad thing to do sometimes. But but you know th this is this is your space right now, right? And so. Um, I think one of the time, one of the things that we as theater leaders think about a lot is like, what should we program that is about the black experience, that is very much about that community's journey. 
Uh, and one of the things that I've found is that so much of it is about black pain mm. and around it all the time. And I'm like, a true diversity shouldn't be the, the exploitation of a community's pain Ooh. only, Ooh. right? It should be the fact that they get to make fun of stuff, of themselves. They get to, Reach you know, a, a black writer is allowed to write the next great farce mm -hmm. and just have it not be a farce, <laughs> you know, but be from their point of view. Yeah. And so can you speak to to that and its relationship, <laughs> and, and, and specifically its relationship into Color Museum, which does, I, you know, I watch it, sorry about that, watching the run the other day, I definitely felt the joy. So, with, yay, for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I work in a black space, I, I teach at Spelman College, so uh, I'm always, and I've been, I've been traversing in black theater, to your point, for 30 years. So since 1991, my first play was at the museum, and I saw a universal black theater, which most commonly is black painting. And I realized that in the fall of 2021, we were doing the hands up at the Alliance Theater. We had a therapist come in. I didn't realize that there was really good therapy. Mm. And I, I broke down because I laughed at the time. And she said, why are you laughing? Said, oh, and that's how I was cute. Mm -hmm. She was the humor. Mm -hmm. But she held me accountable, and I didn't know what to say. I realized that I didn't really know how to deal with the trauma. I've been with 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I've been teaching it, acting it, and directing it, and you have to help people through it, but I've never asked anybody to help me through it. So I actually did a work like that all the day. I'm talking about hours. I couldn't mm -hmm. I couldn't get myself together. Um, but, but, and in the pandemic, and, and throughout that process, I realized that every character is fighting for joy. Mm -hmm. He's had a molecule, whatever their their slice of joy is, that's what the fight is for. That's what I've decided at this point. And as an artist, I, I, I evolve and that may change. But right now, that's what I tell my actors if I can fight for the thing that makes you happy. Until you discover what your actual goal is. Because mm -hmm. most of the time, people they don't know what their goal is, what their objective mm -hmm. is. Like, what, what, what makes you happy? Right now. Right now. Because yeah. anti. Saying that you're gonna do anti-racist work, that's the next, that's the next, that's the next step. That's the yeah. next level. And I'm so happy about that. That's you're you standing on, you're putting your feet down, you're putting the feet to the fire, and it's hard. Cause you know, people there was a lot of backlash and I was surprised by that. I'm like, people are upset because they're taking an anti-racist mm -hmm. stance. They also just don't understand it's it's good business. I mean, to get really boring on you for a second but but really when it comes down to producing it's just good business to be highly diverse in your programming it's been great for me no no honestly <laughs> i i have wanted to do plays for a, a long time and I think especially in, even in like places like Boston and DC, it's like you have straight play actors and you have musical theater actors. Yeah. And I'm like, why isn't there more of a crossover? And I was like, well, I want to do both. So how can I, how can I get into these, these rooms where I'm like, you look at my resume and you're like, oh, musical, musical, musical. Why is she here for play? Mm -hmm. You know, and I, luckily I had somebody in Boston that was willing to take a chance and I, was like, okay, I want to do a play, and I ended up doing The Light, which is a two-person, two a two-hander, and I was like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Uh, when I said I wanted to do a play, I meant like third tree from the right, and I get like three lines, right? And then, so it was just kind of like, <laughs> third tree. to dive in, like, head first, and I was like, all right, we're doing plays now, cool. So um, it's just been interesting and so welcoming to be like, Oh, like I'm acting now. Like I'm acting. <laughs> you were acting before. What are you <laughs> yes, of course, of course. But I, I, I always had this, this idea in my mind, and it's not that anymore. But when I was first going to college, uh, I remember auditioning at Howard, and I auditioned for the acting program. And like I was like, oh, I'll audition for the musical theater program just in case I don't get into the acting program. Mm -hmm. And I did not get into the acting program. <laughs> I was waitlisted for the acting program and I got into the musical theater program. And I remember crying like, I'm not going to be a real actor because I'm doing musical theater. We just sing. And like, <laughs> I was just like really upset. But like, then I realized like, oh, musical theater yeah. is like, 
Dancing, I'm like, we gotta dance, sing, and act. And then we gotta act <laughs> through song. And then we gotta act through dance. I'm like, so, like, yeah. So I think all of that has helped me actually to be a better straight, straight play actor. Mm -hmm. Artist. Artist. Yeah. Artist of, of the highest talent. <laughs> good, good, good. I, I have a question for each of you individually. Yeah. What's your favorite character in the card museum? Or your favorite, it, it doesn't have to be your own. Oh, I already know. I already. I'm ready for the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Get on the mic. Miss Raj. <laughs> Same. Miss Raj. Yes, Miss Raj. She's everything. She's. I lovingly refer to her as the, as the mayor of the misfits. Yeah. I just. <laughs> it's something about people who the the outcasts, yeah. the underdog. Yeah. <laughs> no, just the same, same. My God. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. You know the people who. You know, the homeless, the, 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 the veterans, you know, that once we're through with you, you know, now we don't have use for you anymore. And how we can examine those things within ourselves and the way that we operate in society, because it's so quick, we can look at things and be like, oh, you know, that happens. But how much we relegate and throw people away. And so Ms. Raj just helps me take out the magnifying glass and look out the way, look at the ways in which, you know, I feel that the black community doesn't hold space enough for our trans brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And the transphobia and the homophobia that exists in our community, especially by the hands of some of the most evangelical among us. Mm -hmm. it's, it's disheartening, to say the least. But, you know, her presence holds the door for that conversation. Mm -hmm. And so, she's my favorite. <laughs> and how she stands in her power, even though that she's uh, been outcast in a way, and what that power means to her and how she exudes that power to other people as well. No pressure. <laughs> I love the kid. Um, I'm, I'm very fascinated. You know, we're in an era of- Kid in symbiosis. I'm very fascinated because we're in an era of like, you know, self health and like growing and looking inward. And so to have a scene where someone talking to themselves is very for me right now, um, like looking to your past self. And we were talking before about like, you know, magical realism and like this kind of like how we can, like this dream like, this dream likeness of that scene. And um, I love what Jermaine's doing it, <laughs> uh, doing with it too. Um, yeah, I just, I just love the kid. I love the kid. Plus, it has one of my favorite lines in it. I'm not gonna butcher it, but uh, yeah, I love it. No, I'm not gonna say it. Come see the show. <laughs> I think my favorite is Topsy. She is so my shit. Wow! No, right? <laughs> I mean, I know. Look, see, that's all. See, that's all I was gonna say. It's wrong. No, I think Topsy's my favorite. I think Topsy is my favorite, and it's because, like, what we talked about. I think she's the embodiment of all these characters along the way. And like, as I've been working through Topsy, I feel like I'm trying to bring some of each of the characters. I think, like, that's why Topsy is at the end because she is the embodiment of everybody that has come before her. And so it's like, how do I, you know, put, you know, a little nuance from Miss Pat in there? How do I put a Miss Raj snap in my, you know, in my monologue? How do I embody the kid or the man or like everything? I, Topsy is our ancestors' wildest dream. She is the, the present, the future. She's that. I, I so. think she, she has hope. Yeah, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, I love that about the her. The dream and the hope of the slave. Yeah. So, come More. on. So I love Topsy. <laughs> I mean, I do okay with but I like the character. Not You're doing great work. Come on, yeah. <laughs> My um, mine's really does switch like on the day to day. Right now, it has to be uh, Miss Raj and Topsy, specifically for what you just said. Like at the end, you you have this, you have this person that's standing on stage that's just sharing and saying like, you know. 
society, people, whatever, the circumstances that I've gone through, they have tried to suppress me, but no, I rise above that. All of this adds to who I am. And so I stand in that boldly. That's why I love Miss Topsy, and you're doing fabulous work. Um, and then Miss Raj, uh, I'm, I love Miss Raj because one for me personally, it, it just has scared me to do the role, but also I see so much of my family reflected in her um, in terms of like, Get a little deep, but um, get a little deep. Take us there. But um, like my mom specifically, like she's just one person that like gives beyond measure, and so she's always kind of like just stepped on and looked over. And so to have Miss Raj come into a space of saying, you know what, the society is not accepting me. People in my own community may not accept me, but I'm going to use this time in this space where I come in in a club three times a week. I get to showcase who I am. I get to exude my power, and then when I leave here, you know what, whatever, shit may hit the fan, but I get to come back here, and y'all know who I am, so that's what I love about her, this sort of like, and she's also a caretaker, too, like, she really cares for people, I know, like, on the, the exterior, she may seem hard and, like, very brash, but at the core of her, she really loves people, she may not like the people there, or whatever she <laughs> says, and the line, but there's a reason that she keeps coming back there, right? So you do like them people. They just might be reflecting something to you that you don't like, or it may be that you don't like coming to the space because you're not getting what you want from a different space. And so continually like looking at that, I love Miss Raj and I'm learning to love her more and more.